Hi. <laughs> so my name is Robin. I own Horseman Readings. And this is kind of this the the start of my new podcast, I would say. I've done a few uh, episodes in the past through my Robin's Healing. It was called Weird Al's Podcast. And um, yeah, like today I just kind of want to want to start off a, a new journey, I guess, with like speaking with spiritual people, but specifically spiritual women. And um, so that's what brought me to Candace, Cynthia today. Um, we came across each other through a Theta Healing training and um, also came across each other on Instagram. And it's funny, um, I just felt like a connection to her. And then we did a little mini interview before that. this. And now it all kind of makes sense why we're so connected in, in the timing of it, I feel. So um, that being said, um, Candice, you're welcome to just introduce yourself, whatever you feel like is important or whatever you feel like makes you spiritual or just like what what brought you into wanting to even speak today? Yeah, so hi, thank you for hi. having me. <laughs> uh, my name is Candace. Um, I'm an artist, so I sell my art at the Moncton Market. Uh, I'm a mother, um, and yeah, <laughs> I'm not so great at introducing myself, I guess. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so like. <laughs> So the the key thing here is like the biggest thing that I, uh, my goal is here, like if people have a business or like anything that they want to promote, that's a big, a big part of this is like to spread out the word to like reach more people for you to like meet some of my people because a lot of my people are interested in spirituality. Um, oddly enough, like I'm getting into like more art and things like that. So that probably is what brought us into each other. Um, so if you do have any, like anything business related um, that you wanted to like promote or share, like, is there a place where people can find you first of all? Um, yeah, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok under Candace Cynthia. Um, I have my website as well, CandaceCynthia.com. Okay. Um, a bit more about me. Okay. Um, I'm really finding my path in the spiritual world of um, how I'm going to offer or what I ha I'm going to offer um, and how to just incorporate that in a way that works for me and serves others in, um, in the highest and best way. <laughs> Amazing. So what are people going to find when they find you like on social media or like at the market or on a website or something? Yeah, so my art is very feminine uh, based, focused on the feminine body, um, embracing and loving the fem natural feminine body as it is right here today. <laughs> Just learning to love every inch of yourself, however you show up in this world. Um, and just, yeah. <laughs> I love that. So, so like basically, when you when it comes to like the body and that sort of thing so is it like only like only females that you that you target towards or like do you also like do you find like if you're at the market like men are still attracted to the stuff that you have or is it strictly like all women um yeah my my embroidery art mainly it is a, a female audience um However, I do create other adult content that is more, that ha has a large audience for men. Um, and that's just embracing my body, my natural body. Um, and, you know, showing the stretch marks, the, the rolls and um, my body hair as well. So amazing. And uh, a big part of embracing and learning to love myself was opening myself to sharing that the, those images to others and um, really finding a community that loved and support and encouraged um, me just learning to love myself. Awesome. Okay. So when you say like, are you, are you, do you feel like you are in love with yourself or do you feel like that's like a work in progress all the time? I am in love with myself and it is a work in progress all the time. 
Yeah. So what kind of like inspired you, I guess, to start promoting that to other people? You there? Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay if you don't know, but like there could have been a, a little um, moment in your timeline or, or something that kind of like triggered like either inspiration to share or just like an aha moment where you were like, damn, I need to do something about this. Yeah, um, I guess I found myself at a really low point where I was a young mom, I found out that I had narcolepsy and um, I wasn't able to work. So and I was single, so I didn't have much of an income um, and I wasn't able to work a traditional full-time job. So my self-worth was like, got pretty low. Mm -hmm. So I started you know, doing a lot of the inner work of learning what my needs were to begin with, because I realized I didn't know what my needs were. And because of that, I wasn't able to ask for my needs to be met from other people. Mm -hmm. um, so finding what I actually needed and realizing that what other people were telling me that I needed mm -hmm. wasn't actually what I needed, because right. everyone has a different spark starting point and a different place where they're at. Um, and only you truly know yourself well enough to know what you're, what you need. Um, so yeah, it was um, exploring who I am as a person, what value, what I had to offer to this world um, and just learning, you know, realizing, okay, where am I focusing my energy? Where is that bringing me value? And where am I focusing my energy that isn't serving me? Um, just finding the things that worked for me and what didn't. Yep. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so what I'm kind of getting from that is like, so you kind of feel like you, you went through like a, a lower moment in your life so uh where you, would you say like rock bottom or like could you define your like what a low moment would be is it like I've got nothing left like it's time to end or is like low for you just like when you're just feeling like you know this isn't working for me anymore like I need to smarten up and do something about this like a, a universal like pull pulling you into a different direction just curious because yeah. everybody yeah. has like a different version of like low yeah no, um I just didn't have any energy to to even imagine a future for myself mm -hmm. or where I was going and it's it's not that I wanted to you know to leave this world but I I couldn't keep going in the way that I was mm -hmm. I wasn't living I was sleeping through life essentially and just surviving day to day moment to moment mm -hmm. um, so I, I realized I'm like I had to figure figure out how to just have the energy to enjoy life and create a life that I loved and enjoyed because what I was doing wasn't working <laughs> Yeah. And you're being so brave by sharing this. So thank you. Um, so would you say like you've had to develop a lot of trust, like in your process of like shifting over from feeling like low to now being a person that like loves yourself and promotes self-love essentially? Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've had to learn to trust myself. Um, you know, I had felt a lot of pressure from from society and everything to start working and why aren't you working you know you look like you're perfectly capable you're smart you like we've seen you work why aren't you like you know why aren't you working it um and 
while it's true that I was capable of doing more, I wasn't able to at that time. Mm-hmm. And myself a lot of grace and a lot of rest and compassion and understanding that um, I needed to rest and I needed to heal my body. Um, and that if I had pushed myself more, um, I would have ended up in an even darker place. Mm-hmm. Now you talked to me before we came on here about like your healing and like your learning journey and that you were able to like learn a lot through self-study. Would you say that's where, how you started to develop to kind of like get yourself out of the rut or did you go to like a lot of doctors or what was your path? Yeah, it was a lot of self-study. So being a single mom on disability, I didn't have a lot of money to put towards courses and certifications and areas of interest, but what I did have was a lot of time. (laughs) So I used that time to um, listen to as many podcasts as I could about health, wellness, spirituality, whatever happened to be drawing my interest at the time, Um, finding YouTube videos, just accessing all the free, the free resources that I could um, to help help my myself become the type the person that I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So, because um, like really free self study has been around for a long time. Like a lot of people would even just go to the library. But would you say that like so? How long ago was this when you like kind of started your self study journey? Like always, or like were you always an avid reader? Or? Um, as a teenager, yeah, I used to read a lot. Um, after becoming a mom, reading was just really difficult for me to just sit down and read. So, um, listening to podcasts became a big thing, and YouTube. So, like about almost fifteen years ago, um, I really I started learning some and it was it was slow (laughs) slow going at first and finding my way around all that world um you know I had gone down a path of like into the conspiracy theories and stuff for a while and that that wasn't necessarily so healthy to (laughs) follow well a lot of people a lot of people are still into that because I feel like more people have become that way as of lately, because of all the things that we've been going through in society and with the world with like feeling like we don't have as much privacy now, we don't have as much like um, control to make our own choices. We do have control to make our own choices, but the f- some people feel like they don't as much. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, yeah, finding my way out of that and finding myself having a healthier balance and relationship with that with myself um, and with the world and trusting that, yeah, there, there are good people out there. There is lots of love around us and really making sure that I was making choices based out of love and not out of fear. Mm, I'm so glad that you said that because yeah, that's kind of what I was, I was feeling like you were talking about like the, that fear-based mindset. Cause like Theta healing is how we met, which is all about your limiting beliefs and having a fear-based mindset. So it's like, I obviously know that you've worked through, that you're aware or you wouldn't have been attracted um, to that, but I'm glad that you're mentioning that because I just feel like sometimes people aren't able to recognize their own limiting beliefs because like, that's what we go to other practitioners for. Um, But yeah, like, I think it's really cool that you were able to, even when you're like, I was starting to go down a bit of a rabbit hole with the conspiracy theory stuff, like I was over consuming maybe the wrong content or something, or even just like you having um, self-awareness of of like saying, I'm really low energy, or, you know, this isn't the problem. This is the problem. Like, it sounds like you've grown a big backbone. Yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) So like, when did that start for you? Was that part of being like a young mom and develop and having like a dis ending up with that health disorder or what kind of drew what's, what's that saying with the straw that broke the camel's back? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's still a work in progress. Um, 
it, but yeah, when probably when my my daughter was around like seven years old, um, I realized that the marriage that I was in was really, really unhealthy and not something that I could continue living in anymore. I wasn't able to share my truth um, and just be myself. Um, I didn't feel supported emotionally, physically. Um, so I came to the point where I moved away from that and <laughs> faced my fear of being the single mom on social assistance um, and just allowed myself that time and grace to start to get to know myself on yeah. my own, mm -hmm. who I was on my own, um, because I had spent so long trying to figure out who I was based on who I was with and who I was around. Um, I can very easily take on and match the energy of whoever I'm with. Um, so taking that time for myself to really figure out who I am, what I need and realize that, you know, I had to do things differently because of my sleep disorder and because of my, my past experiences um, that, you know, people might not understand why I was doing the things I was doing and that was okay. I didn't have to explain myself wow. um, to everyone, to, you know, and for, I tried to explain myself for a long time to everyone to justify, you know, why I was doing it, the, doing things the way I was, you know, um, but really people don't need to understand. I, I like that. It sounds like you've worked a lot on yourself. So I'm like, I'm glad that, that you're here with me because this is like kind of a great way to, for me also to sort out like what types of people I want to bring in into my world too. Um, mm -hmm. Because I definitely think the people that you're around kind of like match your vibration, right? Like we bring in the people that we're, we're meant to, if you believe that. But so what, was there like a moment in your marriage, kind of like I was talking about, like when you had that kind of like low moment, you said you've like lost your energy and stuff. Is that what you felt? If you want to share like in your marriage, was it like just an emotional toxic drain or was it just like, this isn't for me? Um, yeah, it was, I think the point that really did it was my my husband is not the father of my daughter um, mm -hmm. and her father had kind of stepped out of her life at the beginning of uh, my relationship with my husband. Mm -hmm. My husband had taken on that father role. Um, however, it wasn't my intention to ever hide from her that she had, she had a different father. Um, but over the years and with my husband's influence, um, he he wanted her to believe that he was her father and her only father and when I told her and talked to her about it because she was old enough to know at the time and she was old enough to have some memory mm -hmm. you know? right. um, and when I had had a conversation with her about it when she, you know he got really upset with me okay. um, and I didn't leave right away because that's, <laughs> you know, but that was really the thing that was like, I was like, oh, in this relationship, uh, it's, I'm, it's not safe for me to speak my truth and yeah. be truth with my daughter. This isn't the life that I, I want to live. Yeah. So, Good for you. Yeah. I, I have to hide my past self or parts of my past because or parts of my daughter's um, past. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was like, it was almost like you weren't allowed to make your own choices for yourself, you know, like you said, with your own values and your own beliefs and stuff, because we don't always have to share our partners um, the same beliefs. But whenever I feel like there's a, when you're a family unit, it's kind of helpful if everybody shares 
similar values, right? When we're raising a family. Exactly. And mm-hmm. yeah, I realized our values just really were not aligned. Um, and I wasn't being supported through my health issues or given any compassion or understanding, validation of my feelings, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah. I was like, all right. <laughs> now, do you feel like that happens to, like, to a lot of women? I feel like we've evolved a lot and I know you're into feminism and things like that so maybe that's why this question is coming up but like I feel like there are a lot of women who feel trapped in their relationship because because of like their partners um I don't know like different points of view I guess and different values that can like women can have very different ways of looking at things than men you know and it does take a lot to stand up for yourself so would you say like that you feel like there are a lot of women that would relate to that still today yeah and I mean I was very young entering into a relationship um into that marriage there was a big age gap um I was very young and naive I also grew up with like the family influence of you know, you need a husband, you need a father for your child, you know, you need a man to to support you. And um, so I very much rushed into that relationship, not fully understanding or aware of the further implications of that and um, my expectations of what a marriage was, um, you know, didn't line up to the reality of the situation I found myself in um and I think a lot of women enter relations like I didn't have a chance to find myself Mm -hmm. who I was as a person before entering that relationship and I you know tried to adapt myself to who I thought that my partner wanted or needed you know Um, I I didn't have my own identity at the time. I mean, I had my daughter at 18, like I was barely an adult myself having her. And um, and while like, I'm absolutely grateful and love that I, you know, had, have had that experience. Um, I think it's important for women to be able to find their own identity. Um, outside of a relationship and yeah yeah, and like you may be able to do that while you're in a relationship but I feel like it's a lot easier to find yourself (laughs) when you're not in a relationship and don't have that outside influence um or expect ideas of expectations um put on you Mm -hmm. but if we sometimes I find like the people that we choose to date, however, um, can be really great teachers for us, you know, like, so I feel like, you know, you can go into a relationship and like have these crazy experiences and then say, nope, not what I want. And then having some time outside of that relationship, right? Like you said, that self-reflection, that time alone to kind of sort all that out of like, okay, so like there were some things that happen there that I need to heal from or get therapy from or not just sit in nature about but like figure it out a little bit right and then that way when we're attracting another person into our life vibrationally then it might be I kind of like to say there usually we upgrade (laughs) (laughs) like a car kind of thing as time goes on because we've yeah. we're our soul is upgrading right as long as we're learning but you do run into those people who attract the same person over and over and over and then they wonder why they're continuously in these types of relationships right and do you think that's just related to the person not doing the work in between the relationships or yeah becoming a, aware of who they are and what type of partner they do want to attract. Um, and, be, you know, I've, I've realized that I had to become the, the type of woman that would attract the type of man that I want to have in my life. Mm-hmm. 
So there was a lot that I had to work on and work through. And yeah, a lot of that stuff you do only learn when you're in relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, you need that, that connection and relationship to help you learn and grow. Yeah. And then I do find there are some people who can be really codependent, right? They've been with that same person. So it's like they were 17 and they're still with that person. You're thinking, my gosh, like they would have to be a pretty amazing, like soulmate in order for you guys to be evolving and growing and still be in a good place, you know? But then you get the other people who are like, they've never been in a really in a relationship because maybe something happened to them as a child and, you know, where they had a bad experience with a, a female or a male. And it's just like, nope, not going there. <laughs> and I mean, to each their own, but like, what are your thoughts around, like, in terms of like people getting together at like, say 15 and then, and then the likelihood of that relationship working out, do you think that's like possible? It's definitely possible um, as long as both are learning and growing at, you know, at the same or similar rate or w and willing to be doing the work and recognizing and addressing issues as they come up and knowing that it's not always going to be smooth sailing um, and that, yeah, you are going to be at different places in your journey at different times. Um, if you're still able to find that common ground in that place of love and appreciation and compassion um, and you're both like actively loving each other um, not letting resentments build up and mm -hmm. being truthful with each other it's absolutely um, possible um, yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like if people have been together since we'll say 15 and they're 40 now where we've evolved so much in our social lives it seems like that's like not as common these days but you would think that you would need a lot of counseling like couples counseling to be able to like overcome a lot of the obstacles mm -hmm. because I don't I don't know about you if you see this a lot but I, I'm seeing more and more couples getting into couples counseling. Like it, it's somewhat being more social, socially acceptable. But then I also feel and see a lot of resistance as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know people that are that actually go to counseling? Um. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard of people. Yeah, and they had. It's not because they're expecting to break up or trying to prevent a, a divorce or separation. It's because they realize that there's issues and they need some help to help to guide through um, that. And there's nothing wrong with, with asking for help outside of your, your partnership, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, what if you now just, this is just like a scenario situation. If you were in a relationship with somebody that you knew you needed to do some couples counseling, like you said, not because you want to break up, but because you feel like it would be healthy for the relationship. And that person said, no, I don't need it or we don't need it. What would your thoughts or feelings be towards that? Um, that, that, would, um, that would be a sign to me that maybe that person isn't ready or willing to do the work to change and work on themselves. And that's when you need to shift your focus onto yourself. Um, if they're not willing to do the work as a couple and you're the only one putting in all the work into the, the relationship, then it's gonna become very unbalanced and you're more worth, you know, it's more, it'll be more valuable for you to put that work into yourself. And that doesn't mean leaving the relationship. It means just shifting your focus onto yourself and doing what you need to do yeah. to feel in a better place. I like that because I think what will happen is if, like you said, if you're working, instead of focusing on that person, focusing on yourself, and if you kind of surpass where that person is, like 
then it might be time to leave the relationship. I don't want to say it's because you're better than the other person. It's just, you might've done more growing and they're not really catching up. And yeah. it's like, okay, bye. Cause at least you communicated to the person like that you want to, that you want them to do some work with you. Like, mm -hmm. cause I do think the couples healing as, as, as a togetherness so that other person could know what stages you're in right? Like, and what you're actually going through. Because that's the other thing, too. I find if you isolate and do all the work, your own work, then it's like sometimes that other person is missing out on a lot of experiences with you, because they really don't even know what you're going through, unless you go and, you know, yeah, talk to them about it, instead of experiencing the, the emotional release, like together. Yeah, and I think that goes back to the codependency issue too, is where you can't expect your partner to fix everything for you. There's, you know, you have to learn how to do things on your own and for yourself as well and realize when that codependency is holding you back because you're waiting for this other person to meet you, um, meet your needs when they may or may not be able or willing to yeah yeah and I think that goes back into um like self-acceptance right like loving yourself unconditionally so you're not depending on the other person to like make you feel good make you feel pretty like you didn't say you like my dress today you know <laughs> like it's just like loving the dress that you're wearing your skin that you're in so you don't need other people to tell you how pretty you are you know, just as an idea. It is nice to have, to have that. However, yeah, sometimes we, we can heavily rely on others to make us feel better instead of doing the internal work. Yeah. And sometimes that can become overwhelming for the other person too, and actually create more of a distance um, and, and resistance in the relationship. So when you're able to shift back into yourself and feel that for yourself, then you might see that your partner does start complimenting you more because you are just expressing that energy out there. You know, you're feeling it already and not, not relying on them to give you that validation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are really interesting topics. I told you, I never know where this is going to take us. <laughs> I love it though, because a lot of the people that I work with, like, relationships are a really 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 big thing mm -hmm. um I think it is for everyone um and we're just living in such a weird time where like a lot of the isolation has forced people to have to deal with themselves you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are in a toxic relationship and you have to isolate with that person it's like oh now I really have to deal with them <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know I just feel like these these are times where we're we're kind of forced to look at ourselves in the mirror too and mm -hmm. reflect a bit more on not just who we are and who we're with but like our health as well you know so like reassessing um like your mental your mental health too you know like yeah I feel like sometimes we're taught not to go to work because we're like I have a cold right now <laughs> here um so like I'm I'm being mindful of of my energy and that sort of thing but I find like we're not always taught not to go to work because you're having like mental like a mental health issue right you know, you know? so it's like it feels like mental health has been more of an educational piece for people recently because yeah it's been an issue <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, like I was saying earlier, I didn't, I wasn't able to meet my needs because I didn't know what my needs were. Um, and I would, I was a people pleaser. I would, I'm very intuitive and empathic. So I, I know and can sense what other people meet, need. And I would do my best to try and meet those needs, even if I wasn't being asked with the expectation that they would then be able to do the same for me and my needs would be met. However, that creates a very imbalanced relationship where 
resentments would start to build and because I was giving so much to people and wasn't receiving what I needed in return but I didn't know what I needed and I wasn't able to ask for what I needed Mm -hmm. and it would just come to this breaking point where it was so imbalanced and such a created such a toxic relationship that I you know I'd become overwhelmed and just resentful and would have to just end those those relationships and I wasn't I couldn't see my part in it and how I was creating that dynamic unintentionally Mm -hmm. so like a little bit of self-sabotage would you say yeah absolutely and like patterns so um aside from theta healing Mm because I know you're not offering healing right now, but obviously you have that education and and knowledge for yourself. Sounds like you've done lots of reading, like, um, yeah, lots of learning from podcasts. I've, um, I've done, I did a lot of self-study on Reiki and then I did some informal training two years ago, um, into Reiki. And then, um, this past year, I've got my certifications in the level one and level two Reiki as well. Okay. Um, and how has that helped you? It's, it's allowed me to really find a peace within myself, mm-hmm. um, to connect to myself, to connect to the universe and show me a w- it's shown me a way and allowed me a way to share energy with others without draining from myself mm-hmm. um so with with reiki with that you're channeling the energy you're not taking the energy from yourself and giving it to others you're channeling it from source from creator universe whoever you want to believe is mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the greater power out there um and that was really integral for, for me to learn to give from that place of overflow um, and that I didn't need to drain myself into other people and recognize when I needed to stop and pause and take a break, um, just get grounded and reconnect with myself. Yeah, that that you kind of hit the nail on the head there, I think, because that's probably been the biggest thing on my journey too, because I have quite the story as well. But um, like Reiki is kind of something that just gave me this ability to cleanse myself, mm. you know, because as an empath like yourself, like you said, and all the negative relationship stuff and sorting out your beliefs, it's like we're taking on a lot of emotional baggage that mm-hmm. doesn't belong to us to like exposing yourself to those situations and um I think it's like good to just be able to have tools that you can clear the energy right so it's like really feeling like it's gone not like okay it's gone for five minutes and now I've got to go back to my crappy life it's actually like that feeling of wow like I feel lighter and and it feels like permanently gone um and I'm not going to say things permanently go away necessarily but I'll tell you like some of the shifts that I felt from using like Theta and Reiki, like among many other things, but those like clearing tools can just make you feel so empowered and like, oh my God, there is like a way out, you know, and I have the tool. I'm not going to like find this from somebody else. So that's why I'm such a believer in teaching some of these, these tools Um, because I feel like they're meant to be shared too you know like so we both shared the same mentor um, and she was for me anyway a a wonderful teacher so like I'm just grateful for all those like awesome teachers out there sharing those tools because I think more and more people need them would you agree absolutely and really Reiki um, and then Theta Healing came in it in at a time that I really needed it Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a really you know 2020 was like a really great year for me and then 2021 hit and it was just like one thing after another and before 
before 2021, it was, I just got the message. I was like, I'm like, okay, what do I do next? I'm like, I'm set. Like, what else am I going to do? And I just kept getting the, the message of to relax, to prepare myself, to just, you know, and um, yeah, Reiki just really helps me stay grounded and centered through like, really like, like traumatic things one after another that came up for me of um, losing a couple friends, um, my mom being in a really tough place and actually ended up like moving in with me for a while. Um, and like, yeah, it was, you know, having a situation where the neighbors below me were, had, it was, had just gotten in a really bad situation. Um, and yeah, it was just like one thing after another, but somehow I got through the, that time and looking back, I'm now I'm like, was I delusional? Like what, how did I <laughs> be on such this high level and like not go into this deep, dark, low places? Yeah. through that time like I went through a lot but I went through it with so much ease and grace you know mm -hmm. and I I know that those tools of Reiki and the Theta healing really helped me get through that in in a, yeah just a was much different experience than what it could have been yeah. And that's why I'm such a believer. So we're talking about values and beliefs in that somebody has a form of faith. Cause like, I'm not one to like, be like, God loves us and everybody should love Jesus. <laughs> but I, I don't like really push things on other people, but what I do recommend for people is to have some form of, of belief in a type of higher power. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? yeah yeah and it yeah. doesn't matter like what you believe in it's just like believe in something because mm -hmm. I do find like for myself anyway probably my biggest my biggest white light aha moments have been um when I've gone to like prayer really like when I've had those dark moments where I've had to pray <laughs> <laughs> excuse me and then when I say dark moments, some were darker than others, like some, like we're talking about the counseling when going for counseling, even though you don't, um, you're not in like a dark space. So yeah. I've used prayer for the dark space and also just because it started to become a tool for me. But do you pray as well? Um, not, not so much. I guess I still have a bit of, um, issue things to work at. I grew up in a really religious um upbringing and I still have some things that I'm working through um separating that the religion from the spirituality side so yeah just the word prayer isn't still it feels a bit like mm, I don't know that it, that but meditation um and I guess I guess I yeah <laughs> Does that makes okay, sense yeah, no no but like so to me like meditation almost can be a form of prayer for some people um where they go to like a quiet space and sometimes like manifest to the universe or put in affirmations or put in gratitude do you know what I mean so it's yeah. like really speaking to higher power yeah like to me that's what like prayer kind of is like when if you have a mala and you're doing meditation affirmations it's like prayer beads right but again we have different versions of maybe what we call it but that's I guess kind of what I mean is like communicating with source like um like the house that I live in right now we were living in a trailer for I think it was like 91 days my husband counted because we sold our house and we didn't have a new house <laughs> during COVID. And we're like, I can't believe we lived like without electricity, like off the grid. It was so funny. And it was starting to get cold. And I'm like, okay, I've got to go outside and like tell the universe here, like, bring me that house, please. <laughs> like put it like with data, right? Demand it, kind of like put in your command and say, thank you. 
yeah. um, and then allow it to come in. So that's kind of what I did um, to get my house. And it was only like a couple of days later that my real estate agent said, I have the perfect house for you. You need to call me back. And I pulled up like outside of the driveway and I had chills all over me. And I was like, yep, that's it. I said, give, tell them, we'll give them as much money as they want to. We're moving in here <laughs> <laughs> and it is, it's perfect for us. Yeah. So I guess I'm just using that as an example of how, you know, if we don't ask for the things that we want, we don't get, right? Yes. And it, when you believe in a higher power and you start doing that, you're like, oh, like, it's so nice to have the things that we truly desire and believe and believe that it's going to happen. But it kind of puts us in the driver's seat of our own life, recognizing we have a lot more power in the world than we realize. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I guess it's not like the religious stuff is for me as much as it is. I call that like more spiritual work, right? Which I feel like you are, you're into too. So. Yeah. And this past couple of years, I've really been opening myself to, to receiving and to asking. Um, for a long time, it was really hard for me um, to ask for the things that I desired or even the things that I needed. Um, and I had this really big resistance because that fear of rejection of asking for something and being turned down or told that, you know, that I couldn't have it, you know, um, mm -hmm. and realizing that, okay, sometimes you have to ask for it again and find someone di else to ask <laughs> just because one person rejects you and says, no, doesn't mean that that's not meant for you. It just means that that person might not be able to give it to you at that time um and just learning to be come okay with that rejection and opening myself mm -hmm. to asking and allowing myself to ask um because you know my needs are important and the things that I want are important too and I'm allowed to want things just because I want them not because I need them to survive where for a long time I was in survival mode and it felt like I only had the things that I needed to survive and I wasn't able to ask for the things that I wanted. Oh, I love that. And your bird in the background agrees. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yep, yep. <laughs> She's worthy. She's worthy. <laughs> I love that. So uh, last couple questions here. You're doing amazing. Um, when it comes to yoga, you mentioned to me before this that you've had to kind of like be careful with like doing too much of that or like something about your joints. I just want to know because sometimes people avoid like some of these healthy practices because they have like um, mobility issues or they have like obstacles, but I feel like it doesn't, we don't have to like we can always find versions of yoga, right? Which you said you kind of do. Yeah. And yoga for me is really about coming back to the breath mm -hmm. and incorporating the breath and the movement. Um, and again, I did a lot of just self-work and self-study of in yoga. I didn't do like a bunch of classes or anything, um, you know, watch YouTube videos and just stretching. But I've realized um, my joints are hypermobile. Mm -hmm. So what I thought and was told was flexibility for a long time and like all these yoga poses just seemed so easy and weren't working any of the muscles was actually because my joints were hyper extended and I wasn't quite in the right position because of that so the muscles that you should be activating in in those positions I wasn't effectively activating um and um yeah so learning that I had to be careful of how I was doing it, not to cause more damage and more hyperextension um, for my joints. And yeah, just finding ways to do it that worked with my body. Mm -hmm. I like that. Like, it sounds like your whole journey has been like what works best for you type of thing. It's almost like if I could title yeah, like your theme here, it's kind of like, like I do me <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah finding my way of doing things because like I was telling you before off air like having the sleep disorder um the things that make a normal person sleepy it can make me 10 times as sleepy 
So doing a really intense um, exercise could leave me feeling exhausted after and not actually give me the benefits that most people would feel from that. So being aware of that and not pushing myself too hard to the point of exhaustion uh, and understanding that my body works differently and I can't just do what everyone else is doing or what everyone is telling me I should be doing. Yeah. Don't should, don't should on yourself. Exactly. Don't should all over yourself. That's like my favorite thing. Cause our, our teacher in Theta Healing, when we were in the class together, I think she's like, you're, you're shooting all over yourself. Like, yes. you know, yes. putting pressure on yourself. And that's definitely like, I think females, males do it too, but I, but do you think like females tend to do it even more? Yeah. I, I feel like the world is very based around the male hormonal um, working systems, you know, where the female systems are very different. So the males have the 24 hour hormonal cycle and women's have it over like 28 to 30 days. Our hormones are fluctuating differently at all times of the month. So when we're menstruating, that's when our body like really needs more rest and compassion and care and nurturing but oftentimes as women we're we feel pressured to work through that and to work at the same capacity Mm -hmm. as we would when we're at you know say ovulating and I have this very high energy creative magnetic energy when that's not sustainable for us throughout the whole month if we actually listen to and respect our bodies. Mm -hmm. But society doesn't acknowledge that. (laughs) Wow, I'm so glad that you're saying this because that was my last, kind of my last point was like rest and relaxation. Yeah, like you mentioned like how important that is for like burnout and just Mm -hmm. all of these different things. But I'm glad that you're touching on that just with like, yeah, that like women kind of need it more <laughs> just because of our bodies. We're the ones that give birth. Like we're the ones that feed the child. Like there's just so many energetic demands. We're typically a little more creative. We're typically a little more intuitive, a little bit more emotional naturally, you know? So it's like so important for us to balance our hormones and our our emotions and and like you mentioned you've been indulging a bit more in certain foods like sounds like you have a lot of knowledge of like what to put in your body too yeah and that was part of my healing journey is I really cleaned up my diet and became aware of what triggers um were really affecting and impacting me um and that was a lot through self-study too I didn't have the you know the accessibility to natural paths and stuff So except for through free resources that were available online. um, And so I did, you know, the more of like the elimination diets and just starting from, you know, the basics of I cut out gluten and that was like game changer for me. Um, Gluten makes me incredibly sleepy and tired and just the brain fog um, constantly that was that was lifted. um, And then taking out dairy was another big one. Dairy causes, can cause like a lot of inflammation in the body. So I would always have like a stuffy nose. And that means, you know, that means all your lymphs and everything are all clogged up and not running as effectively. And then um, I had cut out sugar too. And that was another thing that sugar would really spike my blood sugar and quickly, and then lead to a big crash, would, which would make me very sleepy. Um, so becoming aware of how those things affected my body made like, made it so that I wasn't just sleeping through my days and just living that moment for moment, but I was actually able to like, see the bigger picture and plan for a future. Um, yeah. And, uh, like that (laughs) this past, these past couple, this past like year or so, like couple years maybe I kind of slid back from and would have like dairy every now and then Mm -hmm. and this past few months it's been like dairy has you know poutines and uh, (laughs) all the good stuff 
you know, all the good stuff has kind of seeped back in. Yeah. And um, I've realized that like, oh, my pants are, are <laughs> tight. Um, <laughs> Your COVID pants. Yeah, I was like, okay, I need to reevaluate how I'm nurturing myself because that is my feeling for the year is um, feeling nurtured. And I was nurturing myself with these comfort foods, but in the end, is that actually nurturing my body or, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. There, there is validity to having those nurturing comfort foods. Um, but I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I'm, to re I'm in a better place. I can start shifting my focus and um, really focusing on nourishing my body better. I think springtime too is a, a time when most people do start feeling like, okay, start lightening up the food and um, um, you know, but I also heard um, someone recently, she's like, you know, if you're like me, you've been in hermit mode for the past few months, and maybe your body's not as small as it once was. That's okay. The world just needs more of you right now. <laughs> oh, I love that. I feel like that's where we need to end because it's, <laughs> it's like, I love that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. I love that. Cause it sounds like you've just really have been embodying like positive self-image, positive self-talk, like reflection work, going inward and also like outward with your artistry and things. So I definitely want to like check out more of your stuff. And I really didn't like uh, creep you at all before this because I just kind of wanted it to be like a little bit of a getting to know you session as if somebody else were too that knows nothing right yeah. so yeah. Um, I'm so thankful and grateful for this um, and once I like end this like it'll all get cut off so I just want to say thank you so much if there's anything last minute was there anything else you wanted to share that you forgot yeah I just want to Thank you. And I'm grateful for you inviting me on to here. You know, the past couple of years, I really did close myself off to a lot of connections and focus on myself. Um, and I'm at that point of coming out of hermit mode and I feel ready and empowered and to open myself up back to connections and um, really grow and start connecting with more people and building those relationships, um, knowing that I'm able to create balanced relationships where resentments aren't going to come up, that it's okay to ask for what I need and to say what I need um, and receive what I need. Yeah, because you're worthy and deserving. <laughs> Absolutely, as are you and as is everyone listening. Oh, okay. Well, thank you so much, Candace. So make sure you guys check out Candace Cynthia on all of her platforms. And uh, after we get off here in a bit, we're going to make sure that we uh, plug all that into the comments as well. So you can click on the links and uh, thanks for everyone listening and we'll catch you next time. Whenever that is. Bye for now.